How's it going, everyone? Mask here, back with some Eve Echoes. And today, because we finally starting to roll our way into Tech 9, are going to be looking at the new Tech 9 mining ship, the Procure. This is going to be the ultimate fit guide to the Procure. Uh, honestly, all the kill mails of Procures I've seen rolling out have made me so frustrated with the build errors people are making. Now, I just want to jump in here and say these ship fitting videos, I have a lot of fun doing. I love jumping in and testing tons of different things and really coming up with what I think is the best fit for these ships. But please, if you have any feedback, if you disagree with anything I say, please let me know in the comments down below. Let's have a conversation about it as well as uh, suggestions on how to improve the format of this video. I, I would love to just master a a format that people enjoy to watch. If, if Did I spend too much time in certain areas? Any advice, anything I could change, different things you'd like me to show, and of course, other ships you'd like to see me fit test. Give me suggestions for other ships in the comments down below as well. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy the video. This ship is an absolute tank. Let me pop out of the way real quick and we'll just go right to the gate and just talk about why we're not going to touch any of these modules in the lows. You do not need a micro warp drive. It fries your capacitor. You're literally sitting still mining asteroids one like almost all of the time. And if you're going to get jumped by any ship trying to, they're gonna scram you, which turns off your micro warp drive anyway. Not to mention, you have a max speed of like 700 meters per second on a micro warp drive active anyhow, and that's terrible, that's so slow. So get rid of those micro warp drives. This, it, it's just, the potential is just getting fried by it. If I see another procurer with a warp core stabilizer, I'd, I don't even know if I, especially if it's an ally, I just makes me want to cry. Get rid of those warp core stabilizers for the love of everything. You do not need an inertial stabilizer. I've seen all of these in the, like so many of all of these on kill mails lately. Now this one is a little bit of a discussion. It'll, it'll be more evident as I go over the two main builds that I'm going to be presenting to you about the Procure today. But long story short, this ship has immense tanking potential. I'm talking three, four, five minutes of, of significant DPS that you're taking that you can tank. The 13 seconds you get from a damage control isn't going to do you any good at all. And these 8% that you're getting across the board just completely fail in comparison to the other options. Now, let's jump into the two builds I'm actually going to be showing you today. And with after tons and tons of testing, I would absolutely stand by being the current best to procure loadouts. Uh, let's jump into the roll bonuses real quick and just take a look at what we're dealing with here. Of course, we have the natural plus one warp stability. Uh, fifth, we've Our strip miner yield roll bonus has scaled up to 15% from 10% on our retriever. A uh, drone EHP bonus, not really going to affect us a whole lot, but this has a roll bonus of shields. So without a doubt, we are going to be shield tanking this. That's not even a question. So going into build number one, this is going to be built around a medium shield booster. So in our rig slots, we're going to be filling the glaring holes in shield tanking, especially on a procure with a 40% or with anti-EM screen reinforcer threes. This is going to be a best in slot build. A lot of this stuff is so cheap right now, especially with insurance. It really doesn't make sense not to push for best in slot, at least in the tank setup. Build your build your defenses up. They're, they're cheaper. Get them maxed out before you start forking out the money for things like circulation three rigs. It just makes sense. So we're going to have an anti-EM rig. We're going to have an anti-thermal rig. That's going to fill the the mo the two obvious weaknesses. As you can see, EM's now got a base of 40. Our thermal's now scaled up. Otherwise, I think it sits around 20. And our resists are starting to look pretty decent across the board. Now, because we're building this around a medium booster, this is absolutely the best third rig you could put on here. Shield boost amount. This is a, a, a flat out 30% increase to your repping, which is going to be a massive representation of the actual effective HP in this build. In our low slots, we're running triple adaptive invulnerability fields 
three reds outscale two reds and a yellow they outscale two reds and an and a dcu all day uh, with the exception of the yellow wins if you're fighting lasers or if you're fighting rail guns basically those two specifically and almost only if you're fight if you're if you're up against missiles if you're up against uh cannons there's so many things and god if you're getting shot by two different weapons at the same time it's already over red shields outscaling 100 percent so the triple adaptive and vulnerability fields are insane and you cannot sleep on them so this and this build in the mid slots is running large group capacitor transmitters this is to be cap stable with the medium booster and i'm going to show one little modification we have available to us uh after i undock and pull up our beautiful uh ehp screen here so we, i i've created this this nice spreadsheet it's super interactive all the purples are inputs that it, they can fully and actually break down and represent the effective hp and how long you can tank any different damage type in this game because honestly this screen that they give us is absolutely horrible this is like oh yeah your effective hp is twenty four thousand seven nineteen. cool like could you tell me any less just, and just to kind of go through and show the scaling off these red shields we're hitting 31k with resists in the 60s and set uh, just touching 70s we're bouncing up to 39k with resists mid to high 70s now and that third red shield is still even going to bounce us uh we just clicked that a little too early there once again 45k it's scaling beautifully the resists are the super important part here and this is still such a terrible representation of our actual effective hp but i'm able to really show that now so here's our three reds medium booster i'm not going to go too deep into how this spreadsheet works i may feature that a little bit later and at, at the end of the two builds to try not to take up too much time right now but our actual effective hp as you can see this it's off by the slightest bit because what they don't tell us in game are the decimals of these percentage points now i could break it down mathematically in calculating how they get their percentages with the diminishing returns on the adaptives and all the other but that's just not worth it if i i can get this within 600 we're, we're already good for everything i'd ever need to use this tool for it's it's golden so looking at here we have uh this just representing our resists this is a very important number here which is simply the effective hp multiplier which represents your resistances in a numerical form which this means is for every one hit point you have you're actually getting 6.25 effective hp and that, that's exactly how it's represented even in game when they're talking about it so we have here our actual effective hp in each damage type ranges from 45k all the way up to 56k on this loadout of course they also only show you the bare minimum effective hp in game and this can be a terrible representation of actually how tanky you are so now let's get into the actual math we're looking at uh we have our medium shield booster running hot it's going to be at, it's going to be 475 pulling it up here we're repping 475 every 4.67 seconds. This is with very good skills. I'm showing this as a fairly best in slot loadout, which it'll scale back a little bit if, you're, if your skills aren't quite up to par, but this is showing the potential, the ceiling of potential here. It's still gonna operate the same with slightly cheaper gear, with slightly less skills. The concept is still there. Now, the way I look at that is sometimes you're gonna, sometimes highly skilled pvp pilots that do maximum dps will gank you and sometimes less than max skilled dps pilots and you guys all kind of just even each other out you just got to keep progressing the best you can so we are repping uh what we end we end up repping four to five four to six hundred effective hp per second which is a beautiful calculation using that ehp multiplier i was talking about earlier and what this means is we can literally face tank this much dps with this build at any time right out of the gate we are cap stable 100 percent cap stable face tanking 500 dps in this procure that means an interceptor could come gank you who does not there's no way the interceptor is going to do more than 400 like do 500 dps to do and you could perm tank him finish filling up your procure and be like and 
he's just sitting there with you scrammed. Heaven forbid you haven't killed him with your drones. Make sure you always fill your drone bay. Full of drones, by the way. The only way this goes belly up is if your drones get killed off. I always suggest having a few small drones in your drone bay. I like to carry about, and there's, you can carry more of them. I like to have five to 10 small drones and then fill the rest up with medium drones and have a very good drone, drone supply. You will make Interceptor's lives an absolute nightmare, especially with the tankiness that these builds are going to bring to the table. We can face tank uh, four to 600 DPS. At 800 DPS is what I'm using as a comparison right now. We can survive between 2.7 and 5.7 minutes with this build. Now this is cap stable. As we scale this DPS up, you can see how what's going to look like to fight a thousand DPS. We, we're still going to tank a thousand DPS for between a minute and a half to two and a half minutes, depending on the damage type being brought to the table. How insane is that? At, at a thousand DPS, now there's something to talk about. We have the option of dropping one of these group capacitor boosters that I'm showing in, in game here. This is just going to be a toss up and it's going to depend on are you playing in a group? Are you completely solo? Who ganks? How often do people gank where you're mining? Is it solo? Is it two people? Is it one? If you're only ever gank getting ganked by one or two pilots every once in a while, uh, I would go with the, the, per the absolutely cap stable build. You'll be able to perm tank them for a very long time. You already can out rep their DPS, so it's totally fine. But the other option is dropping one of these large group capacitor boosters. And what that's going to do is make us have a capacitor life of about four minutes of, of absolute non-stop medium shield booster running hot. We have four minutes of caps uh, of cap. And this allows us, if we go back to our screen here, what this is going to let us do is throw on a group shield booster instead. And you can see how that's going to push our EHP rep up. Because they were repping another 23.45 hit points per second, which multiplies through, of course, as another 100 plus EHP per second, sometimes more. And uh, that's going to bump our survivability up. If we look before I put that number in, 1.6 to 2.6, 469, we're going to get 2.1 to 4.3. So our survivability just got bumped up. Keep in mind, we only have four minutes of cap stability. So this is peaking around that 4.3 mark, and we're just going to get, we're going to run at a cap. Uh, this also is a little more susceptible to getting drained. This doesn't take into consideration your enemies running newts and stuff, which is why uh, when I look at this build, I tend to just zero out this group shield booster and plan for this. I mean, a minute and a half against a thousand DPS is nothing to shake a stick at. Uh, 469 is just going to bump it up to 2.1 to 4.3. But this gr number in green here is the permanent tank which is super super cool we're looking at literally not being able to be killed by one to two interceptors ganking you pin to you at max dps in the belt period they physically can't like how much dps a good a well-skilled interceptor pair is probably pumping out about 700 dps you gotta you gotta keep 700 we're, we're, we're tanking 700 dps for eight minutes at the worst and these two numbers have reached into the permanent tank. They're literally not going to kill us. We're 100% outrepping them. Now, not caps. Anyhow, so our, our ceiling of potential here, looking at 800 DPS, we're getting around two and a half to six-ish minutes of tank. So that is my that is build number one. Is going to be a medium repper uh, using the rep increase rig. Let's move on to build number two. Now, coming up to the second build I wanted to show you, this is going to be swapping out that medium booster for a large shield extender. And as you can see right out of the gate, there are some huge, huge differences here. Uh, one of them is the shield hit points. And this is actually a tidbit that I've discovered with this Procurer build that is super, super crazy to know and to be able to take advantage of in game. Now, it, it's, it's not a surprise, ship bonuses are an end multiplier in most, in, in most of all cases in Evecos. For example, your strip miner yield, it's a separate multiplier. It actually does not, mul it, it, or, sorry, it doesn't stack slash add and get diluted by all the other um, 
mining efficiency rigs and skills in the game. So it, it, it doesn't get diluted from running efficiency rigs and all of your efficiency skills. The same thing goes with flat shield increase as a roll bonus. Like this math doesn't quite add up. Let me just let me just show you. Look. Uh shield increase 4718. Our our shield hit points if we pop open our our calculator here, we look down, our shield hit points on our previous build was 6595. Uh our hit points have almost they, they've almost doubled. It hasn't went up by 4700. They've gone up by another 6k. So what has happened here is actually the large extender's base hit points is literally being scaled by the roll bonus of this ship. This 4,718 is being increased by 25% and giving us a grand total of 12.5k hit points. And this is the base before we hit that with that beautiful EHP multiplier. So we're still running triple adaptive. We're getting those resists sky high i'm telling you when you look at these numbers and how long this ship can tank for you're gonna freak out it uh in the rigs so we have the same anti-em anti-thermal and we're actually going to swap this third rig to anti-kinetic and it's gonna pump our kinetic resist through the roof is now our strongest flat resist where it was the weakness uh, before it was it shared the lowest category with em at 40 percent of each but due to kinetic ha or due to em having better natural resistances once your ship slips through shield and starts hitting armor overall uh it's a double fold number one you get you get uh, stacking penalties so you're if you were, if we were to put on a second anti-em rig it simply wouldn't boost as much uh and kinetic is actually just our lowest ehp uh, one more time with a visit to our previous build here as you can see uh kinetic was at 45k where everyone else was inching over 50. so we are definitely gonna boost up that bottom line let's take it up to our uh three red three red shields and a large extender here now the other argument that i always get is whoa what about the shield increase rig well the shield increase rig is only going to get us up to actually i have the number saved here 13 8 19 so you can kind of see what this is going to do to our ehp and our numbers here it's having a fairly minimal minimal uh we're getting about 6k ehp across the board on uh, all the resists and our but our kinetic being our weak point is only going to get only going to peak out at 80k meaning our lowest ehp is still 80k now let's take a look at what happens when we swap that and bump up the new numbers with a kinetic rig instead because that is the other option so i'm gonna go ahead and undock uh get our shields hot so we can take a good look at what the resists are going to max out to here so we're hitting uh yeah so we had we're just scraping up on 80k ehp right down the kinetic line fully hot and the ehp numbers immensely bigger on this build obviously we've doubled our base hit points but this does not rep nearly as well as the other build does so the actual tank time becomes quite similar but we're getting our kinetic now up to 88 percent so let's take a look at just how that affects our tank here so if we bump this to 88 we go from 74k to 118k uh, completely patching up that hole we st our lowest res our ehp still comes in at about 78k but we've patched up our actual massive weak weakness way way more now this will continue to scale better because a flat hit point increase is just a it only pays you back one time when you actually increase your resistances as long as you have a consistent source of hit points any form of repping which we do with two large group boosters in this build then that increase in resistance will pay you back so much more over time by having that effective hp multiplier being higher so running the two group boosters hot we're going to be repping 50 or 47 hit points per second which comes to an effective hp of about 230 to 390 depending a 390 being that beautiful kinetic resist that we're now sitting on now if we take take a look at how this build is going to handle 800 dps that's the DPS we kept looking at. 800 DPS on our cap stable booster build. We're looking at three to six minutes. 
800 DPS with this large extender build, we're now looking at 4.5 to 8 minutes. It's actually going to handle it a little bit better, but we this is with four activations of our large extender. That's we're, we're coming we're coming up on running out of cap at this point, which means when this build would want to activate its large extender the fifth time, it is no longer going to have the cap to do so. That being said, that is a very long time considering the sh large shield extender cooldown is 85 seconds. So we're looking at we're looking at over 400 seconds already way in the clear and none of these tank numbers uh, are going to hit that at 800 DPS. So then you start being able to push this very, very much higher to, to get closer to that 400 seconds. Look at how this build will handle 1200 DPS. We're tanking for two and a half. Actually, we need we, you have to adjust the uh, extender activations here now. So we're tanking 1200 DPS for two to three and a half minutes. Just incredibly tanky what does it take to pump out 1200 dps that's like four interceptors you have enough time to un to, to have a ship two jumps away jump to your aid build the procurer pure tank you will not regret it this is a, just an absolutely insane build now which one do i prefer between the large extender and the medium booster build. Well, the medium booster build will tank one to two attackers with a, with DPS in the three to 500 range for longer. It's just a fact. If, if, if yeah, you literally can't be killed by like a solo interceptor. You can permanently tank it forever. That is, that is the, the big difference here is perm tanking because of the repability of being cap stable, pumping out a medium booster with that boost amount increase. We're only if repping two to 400 EHP with the large extender build using group shield boosters. And we're repping four to 600 with the, with the medium booster build. The big difference here is we also have to take and consider how, how are you mining? Are you solo? Or are you in a group? Is there other people in the group running mid slots that can help you as well the where this act this comparison gets flipped right upside down is when you start doing stuff like this now i'm in a group uh we're gonna round this to 900 for easy math now we have four large group shield boosters running i have one other friend he's also running large group shield boosters now we're tanking 1200 dps for two and a half to six minutes that's absolutely insane Heaven forbid we do it again. We got 1,400. 1,400. We are now four to eight minutes. This is three procurers. Three retrievers for all that matters, really. Mining beside each other with their... And they activate the group shield boosters when they're attacked. You literally... Where does this end up plateauing? It, uh, it starts getting a little nuts here. In fact, we've bought ourselves enough time to activate a third... Uh, large shield extender against 1200 DPS. So the math is actually four to 10 minutes. Uh, let's pump this up to 2000 DPS. We're now starting to tank some serious ships. Our little group of three procures, it ain't dying. Minute and a half, 2k DPS. This is how to build a procure. Get rid of those micro warp drives. Get rid of those stable, those warp core stabilizers, those inertia stabilizers. This is a literal tank of a mining ship. Anyhow, that is going to conclude my procure, my, my ultimate procure fit guide. Honestly, between the large extender build and the medium booster build, I'm I still lean towards the medium booster build for a completely solo completely solo pilot because it will do better versus one or two attackers and you should never be picking a fight with more than one maybe two attackers if you're mining solo anyway the large extender build has the ability to scale up if you're mining in a fleet much better you can start piling on those mid slots using them together coordinating with other people in the group it only takes one group capacitor booster, maybe two, I think it is only one, to very much stabilize out the activations of this large extender, then you no longer are limited by the four, the four activations. But 
like even thinking about four large shield booster activations being a limit or uh, extender activations being a limit on your build is kind of hilarious who is going to tank for four minutes and you either a have help come or b that person is long gone because no nobody wants to actually try hard for kills they just want them to be fed to them so throw it together undock with your beautiful i love how the game's like oh yeah you have 74k ehp let's take a look at what we actually got here all right 78k em 93k thermal 118 kinetic and 87,000 explosive this is the math the game does not show you that you don't get to see by bumping our kinetic up to 118 if you're getting attacked by rail guns if, if they come at you with thermal kinetic damage <laughs> You're literally tanking 2,000 DPS for three to four minutes because of just how beautifully you've gotten these resists up. People sleep on boosting their resists into the 80 plus percent. They, they just get so fixated on the little things. I gotta have a micro warp drive. Why? It fries your capacitor. You lose 25% capacitor capacity just from putting it on your ship. Not even mentioning if you turn it on. Uh, and you're just, you are throwing away the potential in this absolute gorgeous module here. This thing is a beast. Now, obviously these numbers are going to scale back slightly with, with lower skills, but not even that much. The core of this build is going to work even if you're just running like 4-4 four, four, or 5 fours right across the board. The scaling of, the, of finishing advanced and, and kicking your way into expert on the skills doesn't do a whole lot anyway but uh that is that's gonna do it for today's video this is how i suggest you should build your procure stop dying and start making those gankers wish they didn't try to gank you honestly it uh i i fooled around with e-war in the mid slots this and that so much of it just lowers your tank potential at the end of the day if someone comes and ganks you as a retriever, as a procurer, you're not going to kill that interceptor if they know what they're doing. A skilled interceptor pilot is not going to die to you. It doesn't matter if you have a newt, a web, a scram. A good interceptor pilot running dual prop with an afterburner and a micro warp drive will get away every single time. Your DPS is too low. This ship has 60 DPS. It, no matter what, you would need to lock them down for a good number of seconds before you could ever think of doing damage to them you only go 700 meters per second with a micro warp drive not to mention not to mention an afterburner you are not going to kill them uh they have to be terrible pilots and planning to fight terrible pilots is no way to build ships this is meant to say piss off quit tickling me and call in a buddy to come blap them that is and and it's going to work they're going to get frustrated. You're going to sit here laughing at how little damage they're doing to you and have a ton of fun and keep mining and making uh, and making that, uh, that, that good, good isk. Now, the whole profitability of mining and isk, and that, that's a whole rant for another day. This is how to build a procure, my ultimate guide to procure fitting. Obviously, I don't need to tell you guys, triple circulation rigs are better than any other mixture that you can think. One efficiency, two circs, not better. Uh, from pure performance, if you're trying to do a price per performance ratio, there's some arguments, but insurance. Insurance has kind of nullegated all of those. It's kind of best in slot or take a hike now because you buy it once and it costs you 30% to replace. This is not an insurance system rant. We're leaving. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope to really, really get into doing more of these ship builds. Uh, I've, I've been fit testing a ton lately. I like to jump in a Discord call with a bunch of friends now, and we just have a fun afternoon cranking out really cool ship builds. And I've been working on this format so I can start sharing them with you guys as well. I put together this beautiful, this is an absolutely fantastic breakdown of how ships tank in this game, how damage can be applied, and you can easily... Take your DPS, break it down with the ratios of your weapons listed in your fit test or listed on the fitting screen and apply that damage perfectly 
in this chart as well. You can say, my, my Macarial has 2,000 DPS. It's using this weapon. This is the, the ratio on how the weapon breaks breaks damage up. Pump it in, and you can I can tell you exactly how many seconds this ridiculously tanky procurer can tank your Macarial. Fantastic. But uh, I think I just I just liked hearing myself talk today. It's been too long. I just, you know, life is life. Busy is busy. But uh, thank you so much for watching. Honestly, I, I have so much fun doing this. And uh, I really hope I'm able to open your eyes to how, to how to build ships a little more effectively. Stay tuned. Hopefully much more to come. I'm looking to cover a huge different variety of ships. I myself going to be starting to break into the back into the PvE slash PvP scene. As unfortunately, Indy is not what it used to be. Still going to be my main source of income, but I want to diversify. And that's really going to allow me to build tons, tons more ships. And uh, yeah, have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, share the video. You know, any, any minor friends coming up on T9 soon, they're going to want to know how to build that Procure. Show them the way. Thanks a bunch. And until next time, don't forget, stay classy.